I'm not a politician, I'm an artist. And I find that uh, if my art is done well and is received by many people, that in itself is a contribution. I think anybody who has a, a celebrity platform that's immersed in the arts, I think one of the best things any of them and all of them can do is to find some aspect of human need and to commit themselves to becoming part of bettering our global humanity. Most of my family in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, were plantation workers. culture because it helped with the tediousness of working in the sun and all day long. He was really, you know, one of the first multimedia stars uh, and he had this crossover appeal. Um, I think because he was in all these different media and because he was so handsome uh, and, you know, really uh, that could not be denied, we couldn't deny it black or white, uh, that he was able to be this crossover stars in a star in a time when there was still legal segregation. Now, it seems to me that Foggy and Beth have probably done more to increase sympathy for the colored people than anything since Uncle Tom's Cabin. Could you explain why you refused the part? First of all, I don't think that the Negro people in America are in need of sympathy. And uh, secondly, uh, when Porgy and Bess was first done, at the time that it came about, it was historical, and it was very important. And at that time, it represented progress. I just feel that at this time, it doesn't, uh, uh, the subject matter, dice and razors and lust and whatnot, is not necessarily a subject matter that the Negro people in America need at this time. <laughs> It's unfortunate that in America, the idea of civil rights and civil liberties has to be popularized. Dr. King were really good friends. And uh, so starting from the you know, early 60s, he was an ambassador to the public uh, at large uh, to not only uh, bring Dr. King's message, but to help him raise money to um, and bring people into the movement. So he served that purpose. Johnny Carson had become the the you know reigning uh, late night host in terms of his popularity. And then television itself was still at a time when it was pretty segregated as well. He really was key to bringing both black and white people into the civil rights movement. 
So he, um, having Harry on, you know, and Harry insisted that he be able to choose his own guests and Johnny granted him that. And we were in the middle of a year, 1968, that was explosive to say the least. And so it was a big deal to have Harry on to give him basically free reign. Harry wanted to show what the world could be, that, you know, Black people and white people uh, can sit and Indigenous people can sit on the couch and chop it up uh, and laugh and also talk about very serious things. We must go to the polls in 1984 and tell Captain Reagan and his crew that the ship is in revolt. The conscience of the world is in great need of awakening to the crisis that exists in South Africa. generations that come now would understand this and see the power of art that is liberated and is put in the service of social development and not just try to entertain. It's such a silly concept.